Podcasting from the top of the rocks. This is News on the Rocks with Patty Steele and Wayne Cabot. Mad Men. Yes. Mad, Mad Men. Right. The yeah. Steve, Steve Madden, Madden documentary. Yeah. I got to tell you, it probably is one of the, I'm a huge documentary person. Yeah. Maybe one of the very best documentaries oh, I've ever seen. Nice and the reason I say that Should is. I put this on? If you want to. Yeah, yeah. If you want to hear your voice. Yeah. We do it because and, we're in love with our own voices. And speak into the microphone. Yeah, good. Okay. <laughs> I'm ready. And the reason I say that is because when I first started watching it, okay, it's following you around from the back through different clubs and things like that. But the thing that I loved is that thing evolved into such a deep personal look at who you are and what, and you kind of like trying to figure out who you are yeah. it looks at you as a kid that reminds me so much of my son because really? it's like all over the map we're you all know, trying this, to figure out who we are and going right? to college in florida and then me having to pull him out after a year because yeah, nothing was getting done yeah and now uh, he did go through a, a period of uh, problems with drugs and now back in college finally straight a's yeah. and just this incredible creative mind yeah. and watching you kind of having to tease that out because you know when you were a kid people didn't really talk about adhd they didn't there was no kind of okay let's see how we can yes. help this guy get past all yeah, of that no they didn't have all that you got thrown into the shoe store in cedarhurst and i lived in lawrence <laughs> what yeah. i didn't know that yeah yeah you were a five towns girl i was a Are five you from towns the five towns i was at that point i was for about uh, six years i lived in lawrence yeah you I, lived in lawrence i did ps Where in lawrence? ps number one on banister lane out behind the yacht club, back in those days. You went days. to number one school. Yeah. So did I. What? I did. <laughs> oh my god. Was that your pigtail that went in the inkwell? <laughs> I did. I went to number one school. Oh, that's so funny. Yeah. Wow. Well, yeah. And so. Um, but Wait, what? hold on a minute. <clears throat> you so guys went to the moved? same school. I want to. I want to just focus on this for Elementary a second now. Elementary school. Did you know the Elementary same? School. Elementary school. Elementary school. So this I, is a public were, school. So you lived in. La did you live in Lawrence? I lived in Lawrence. Yeah. Oh my God. Wow. Yeah. Did, did you know Andy Gold? <laughs> <laughs> I probably did. But did you know? You were probably, first of all, you're much younger than me. Oh, so you, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> and, um, but you lived behind Bannister Lane. Well, you know where the yacht club is? And now across the street, in those days, there was a huge old mansion that was deserted that we used to go over there and play in the gardens and jump in the house and all that kind of stuff. But that was torn down and it's part of the golf club now. And oh, God, so. I do. Well. Yeah, oh there was a big old Victorian that my dad bought when I was Your a little. Your dad bought it? When I was a little tiny girl, and we wow. and we lived there, and um, and sold it. You know, later on. Was it on. on the water? It no, it was right at the top of Bannister Lane, and you would and it goes down towards the water. Now across the street, rest of the golf club behind it, we used to own the land that went back right toward the yacht club, but that got piecemealed out, and there are other houses wow. there now. That's but, interesting. Uh, yeah, yeah, it was a lot of fun. We had a great. I learned to fish at that yacht club by holding a string yeah. and dropping it off the dock. <laughs> yeah, I spent brothers. a lot of time there, yeah. where, right where your house is. Oh, how funny I, is that? Yes. What is it with you, Long Island people? You yeah. so? No, I'm serious. We <laughs> had the same place. We had Anthony Scaramucci in Long right. Island guy. Is he from we Long had Island, yeah. Anthony Scaramucci. Oh God, yes. Jim Brewer, Long Island guy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What is it with you, Type A? Go type out a. And She's definitely type She a. is type A. I know. Well, you know, I have to tell you, it's funny. One of the one of the things I wanted to tell you before you even yeah. started talking was the thing that unnerved me after watching the documentary was that you said you're constantly looking at and taking pictures of women's feet. And I went, holy shit, what am I going to wear? Uh, and yeah. so my 21-year-old daughter said to me, she and I both got within the last few months some Madden espadrilles that we both good, liked. And good, good. And I need the money. God Damn. love her. She <laughs> wanted no, you she don't. wanted the same shoes her mother <laughs> yeah. has. But um, she said, oh, you can't do that. He's going to think that's cheesy if you wear his shoes. And so then I thought, well, do I wear Uggs? Maybe it'll snow and I can wear Uggs. And finally I said, okay, well, I don't want to be cheesy to yeah. him. So I just wore a pair of, of mules, basically. Then he discovers Well, here's morning, the thing. So I, I'm, I was saying to Atlan, our producer, 
I never hear, I, I watched the whole documentary. There was never a word said about men's shoes, and I'm really not sure, but maybe. So I went online because I didn't want to didn't want to insult you and ask the question. Yeah. So I went and looked, and sure enough, there's a whole line of. Oh a, yeah, we make great men's really shoes. Really good oh, looking. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. And then well, Alvin wait. said, "Well, wait a minute. That shoe that you're wearing looks kind of like that one, only it's low top." And I yeah. said, "I'm like, yeah, I don't even know what this shoe is." And I pulled it off. Yeah, we have a. And what great, does it say? Yeah, it says Steve Madden. And I had <laughs> no clue as you were walking <laughs> yeah. up the stairs that I was I wearing it. your shoe. And they look handsome on you. They, they great do. They're giant. And what size? You know what? They, these are 16s. Thank you for making 16s. Are you wow. serious? I'm wow. serious. Wow. You didn't even know you made 16s. Well, you make damn good 16s, and they don't, they don't even scuff up. 16s? He's 16. a 6'7". He's so. Damn. Yeah. Exactly. sorry for your wife. <laughs> yeah. well, and she's 5'2". <laughs> Uh-oh. I would have been a hit in prison. You tell yeah. me. <laughs> so, wait. I, I so, wanna... wait, but do you know, uh, so do you remember the Nature Preserve? Sure. Of course. <laughs> Yeah. What? What's so, so that was where your mansion was. <laughs> no, I'm not a mansion. <laughs> no, I, I, I am. There's a place called the Williams Estate. Yeah. Yes. That's right there. It's That's, right there. Yeah. The Williams, the elder couple who owned that whole thing, uh, were still lived in that house, sort of right on the corner, a, across from us, and right at the head of where the old estate house was. Yes, it was. I know exactly where it is. The, that... I looked at the Williams Estate uh -huh. to buy it. Wow. I did. Because they turned their backyard mm -hmm. into a into two holes on the golf course. Right, exactly. I think they donated the land. Wow, wow. Maybe I don't know. I made that up, but they might have <laughs> donated the land in the '60s to the right. to the village. Right, right. Um, but it's still a beautiful house. It's gorgeous. It's, I it's, still every once in a while take a ride out there. And, yeah, and it's an old uh, should... it's an old house uh -huh. like you described. Right, right. That that is is huge but doesn't look big it's one right. of those houses it's, yeah it's very comfortable yeah you no know, it's big yes it's a big yes. house but yes. you don't it's just one of these houses that's shrouded with you know uh trees and everything yeah. so yeah. you really can't tell how big it is yeah it was a beautiful place to grow up because there were everybody had roses on their little picket fences and stuff and i would ride my bike wow. nobody worried about whether you rode your bike all over the neighborhood in those days so it was it was a Pretty place wow, to grow Wow, number up. one school. And right next to you. Wow, that's yeah. amazing. Were you yeah. living there when you began working as a uh, shoe? What well, you used yeah, to stock I, the shelves, right? Uh, Early on, first time. Yeah, I lived in Lawrence. Yeah, I I lived in Lawrence. So I went you to worked high school, in Cedarhurst. Went to Lawrence High. Yeah. yeah. So Cedarhurst was the town uh, that we shopped in, mm -hmm. but really the five towns is what it's called. Right. Right. And um, I get a lot of interest. People talk about it. Uh, yeah. It's a bit like uh, uh, Scarlett O'Hara talking about Gone with the Wind, a civilization gone with the wind. Yeah. She's talking about the South. Right. Yeah, yeah. And it's the five towns is a bit like that it because is. it's gone. Yeah, it's very different. Everybody, it's uh, right now, it's it. Orthodox Jewish people moved in, and they, mm -hmm. it's a beautiful neighborhood still. Yeah. But it's you know the, all the mostly it was Jewish actually, uh -huh. but yes. you know most of the people moved to the city or the North Shore. Right. So that era is gone. But it was really one of the first suburbs, you know, sort of cliched Jewish suburbs mm -hmm. in in New York or if not America, very prominent. Yeah. Well, yeah. weren't you the beginning of the end because you're only half Jewish? That's right. So you came into town. <laughs> Actually, yes. It is. It is. Uh, I was. Yeah. <laughs> right. But uh, it's still a beautiful place. And uh, I visit it. And, um, you know, it's, not, it's, it's on the water. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, uh, it's on a peninsula. Right. It's very nice. Yeah. I think they called it the Isle of Wight, at least when I Oh, was yes, the Isle of Wight. Yeah, Not yeah. many people know about that. Yeah, yeah. Yes, the so, Isle of Wight. I know somebody who rents a house on the Isle of Wight, actually, still to this day. Uh, there? Yes. That Isle of Wight, not the one over in England. No, I know. <laughs> yeah. Right, wow, real neat. Yes. So uh, there's so many things that I, I got so excited when um, we knew we were going to talk to you. Um, and the shoes are a very... Um, important part of it but a small part of it because the thing that really stuck out to me in this documentary was this journey of discovery you went on about yourself and the to me one of the pivotal moments was when you were hanging over the 
the balcony deck at your house out out there and yeah. you're kind of reflecting on who you are and just like trying to figure it all out talking about how you didn't really trust yourself and whether or not you could after you got out of prison yes. whether you could recover mm -hmm. all of that right and then and then you went but I'm still nuts. And I thought, wow, this guy's like putting it all together because it is hard. When you grow up in with that kind of manic approach to life, you're blessed because when you find what you love, man, you put everything into it. It's like my kid. Yeah. But when you get into things you shouldn't get into, you also put everything yeah. into it. Yes, of course. And then the thing that I really loved was when you were in prison, you took a really hard look around you at these guys and these people and I and this is like a pet thing for me is the need for prison reform because oh, yeah. we we set it up so that people just it's a vicious circle you get out you wind up going back in and I can say because of my kids issues he did about six days in the Essex County uh, prison system that's a long stretch in Essex County well no let kidding. me tell you it was <laughs> you know it. it was the problem was yeah. is that he was just beginning. Get all those Short Hills gangsters out. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, it's, it's like Newark. <laughs> no, I know, I know I'm familiar with and, Essex. And man. one of the things that he had yeah. a problem with, and, and he knows, I've shared this before, is he had an opiate addiction, and he had just gone on Suboxone when he got there. They would not let him have access, even with his lawyer, to his medication, but right. he said everywhere he could get heroin. Everywhere yeah. in that prison. Wow. And when he left... Thankfully, after six days, which most people aren't as lucky, there is a sign on the door that said, see you next time. Wow. And what yeah. are you setting these children up for? Because yeah. frequently, they're really young people yes. in there. Mm -hmm. And even if you're not young, you have grown up in a situation where this is a part of your life, that, and you're trying to work your way out of it. And if that's the setup, what are we doing? Yeah. So, you know, uh, the treatment for... Um you know, drugs, uh, well, we're legalizing marijuana now, right? Mm -hmm. So I don't know what says that says about the last 70 years where you incarcerated so many people for selling pot, and right. uh, so that was a mistake. Um, but just the way we've dealt with uh, drugs uh, with incarceration is- It's a major part It's of a big problem, particularly population. in the black community. Mm -hmm. They've, we've really done a terrible injustice there and giving so much time out and uh, without sort of getting to the root causes, but it doesn't solve anything. No. So uh, it's a very deep problem. And, uh, but that's a big problem because most of the people that are incarcerated are there because of drugs. Yeah, absolutely. So, absolutely. you know, nobody, I mean, if you hit, somebody over the head and steal their money, mm -hmm. you should go to jail. Right. Uh, and uh, there is, you know, jail is there to protect innocent people from sure. from felons, and I mm -hmm. get the need for it. Right. It's important in a society. Yeah. But the drug thing is more complicated. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we've basically been warehousing people, and it's getting better now, actually. Um, there's been some reform, mm -hmm. and that's good. It's a good thing. Actually, that's, I think, the only uh, time in the last couple of years where the left and right have worked together. Uh, Trump actually did sign a prison reform right, I know thing that. and worked with the most progressive uh, African-American leaders, which was really very encouraging. Yeah. So we, we should, that was a good thing. I know and, you've been involved with the Doe Project, correct? Yeah, you know, uh, again, a, a lot of the problems uh, have to do, really are have to do with race too. Mm -hmm. So you know, it's easy to lump them in all together, but you really need to drill down and see that there's a problem in the African American community, particularly. I mean, right. all communities, but it's it's. Uh, you know, they're flooded with drugs and the neighborhoods are broken up and it's it's a terrible problem and it's something I think a lot about. And there's a lot of, the, and one of the other problems is that even if somehow they manage to get out, um, what, do they, what do you do? How do you help people get a sense of a future? Well, we gotta stop locking people up for drugs. Yeah. I mean, or there has to be a, a 
I mean, I just, this is the greatest country in the world. We have the greatest technology. Mm -hmm. We have the greatest TV. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And we got to come up with some better ideas with incarceration. It's yeah. not working. Yeah. It's just yeah. not working. The war on drugs is not working. Right. And, uh, and uh, you know, we have a lot of smart people here. And, you know, there needs to be education and there needs to be, you know, rehabs and, and just locking a kid up for 20 years yeah. or 10 years, a 19 year old boy, mm -hmm. you know, in the ghetto or whatever it is, you know, and putting them in prison for 15 years is not the answer. Where he learns nothing. It's just further destruction of the community. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's, I mean, we could go on and on, but it's, it's, a, it's a terrible thing. Your biggest fear was going to prison. I know. And you went and to prison it and was it was well, worse than you thought. That's what you well, said. You know, um, yes, it was worse than I thought. Prison is terrible. And uh, um, is it the isolation? Is it fear? I mean, what is it that was that spoke to you? Well, the worst thing about prison is being away from the people that you love and yeah. being away from society. And the what actual you do and, in prison. Yeah. And yours you know, is 40 is, some months? Yeah, I did 30 months in prison. 30 months. And, uh, you know, I actually being in prison was no was okay. You know, it wasn't terrible. I mean, it wasn't like going to Turks and Caicos, but uh, <laughs> uh, it, you know, I got through it. You develop routines. You know, Friends. you're reading, you're working out. I mean, it's, but it's just being away. You feel part of you feels dead. Yeah. You know, it's like almost like this is what being dead feels like. What what happens <laughs> with the people? I mean, because you have a little contact with people outside. Well, they come visit you, and then they go home and. And then that's it. <laughs> yeah, and that's it. Wow. And you go, yeah, so it's tough. And you made the mistake situation. of sitting on some guy's bed. I didn't realize the prison rule. I'm glad you told me this. Should oh, I ever? Saw, should I ever? Really should did. I? Yeah. I watched. Yeah. Should I ever wind up silly. in prison for any reason? I will not sit on anybody's bed but my own. What's yes. the prison Big rule signal. on that? <laughs> yeah. He was a great guy. He is a great guy. Uh, Vern, my friend from Fort Lauderdale, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, you know, it was just interesting getting friendly with a lot of i mean i'm the whitest white boy in the world you know <laughs> so like me being friends with these black guys and you know you know getting into their culture and their music and it's just it was it was an eye opener and uh you know it was uh they they they're great friends still to this day but you made the friends. mistake of sitting on his bed i made a mistake of <laughs> which means what Come on, Steve, I tell us. I don't know what it means. Yeah, but we well, you know, we were just. <laughs> they never got to that he's part, just such okay? such a cool guy. I <laughs> saw a certain podcast in which he said it means you're his girlfriend. Yeah, no, that's what he said, but no. <laughs> okay. No, no. So but, not uh, everything in Mad Men, the pot, the, uh, excuse me, the documentary is, is accurate. <laughs> you were never anybody's that girlfriend. Is not That's good no, he know. didn't okay. say he was. No, well, he was he was being a friend to yes. him and telling him, "Oh, please." Yes. He was telling him. I'm just him, trying to spin a better story. That's he was all. helping yes. him. <laughs> yes, but anyway, we uh, we got through it. Yeah, we yeah. got through it, but we took some things with us. Right, and uh, hopefully we can help some people. And not enough, but mm -hmm. uh, we really the drug thing is a big deal. That would be helpful to, yeah, you know to come up with more intelligent ways. You know, when I went, it was 100 plants was automatically 10 years. 100 wow. marijuana plants. Wow, wow, wow. 10 years. I'm, you know, so, okay, so now- Automatic five, 10 years. Five pounds. Minimum. Mm -hmm. Five pounds of pot. I don't know how many pot plants that is. I, well, 100 mm, plants. Maybe it could be five. I would say it could be five pounds of pot right there. 100 yeah. plants? Well, now and there's five, pot stores. Mm -hmm. But five pounds, the reason I bring sure. up five pounds is that's what- derailed the New Jersey legalization was they wanted to expunge the records of anybody who sold up to five pounds and people are like no five pounds if you're if you got that much pot you're a, you're a dealer you're a distributor you deserve to go to prison and that's why there's not at this moment legal weed in New Jersey yeah. five pounds so I don't smoke weed I never really liked it too much I mean I smoked it when I was in high school maybe or something like that but it was not your not something but it didn't I level see you now there i've seen stores and it's amazing they like department stores with marijuana oh, I mean, it's like a know, wine shop yeah it is yeah, even yeah. better it's like there's one in california that's like it's like going to apple i mean it's unbelievable 
Um, you don't do drugs or drink anymore or anything. I don't. You're done. I don't. Yeah. I don't. But, um, yeah. Uh, we do. We're by the way, we're drinking some bullet. I was bourbon trying to. Oh, is, you are drinking bourbon. Yeah, this is news on the rocks. And <laughs> I see. We I got tend it. To, and the reason we do that is because we kind of decided we wanted to talk about interesting newsy stuff, but kind of the way you would at a cocktail party. I see. And yes. so it kind of loosens you up, gives yes. you a little. Bit well, I'm always loose. I don't need that. Yeah, no. I can tell. That's <laughs> but, our cover story uh, for drinking in the morning. <laughs> yeah, right. It, anyway, we we have. Um, <sighs> wow, I mean, the uh, marijuana. I mean, booze, marijuana, it's all the same, right? Mm, I mean, yeah. booze is legal. I mean, you should be, you know, if you're driving under the influence of marijuana, you should be locked up, just like if you were drinking uh, booze because you're endangering people with it. The, the same rules should apply, but to make one legal and 100%. one illegal, well, it doesn't seem, and it always was a head scratcher to me, even as a kid. Like, huh? How come, like, this guy stumbled around, he's drinking, and that's legal. But over here, a guy is like, mellow, smoking <laughs> right. a joint, listening to Jerry Garcia, but he could get locked up. Yeah, It always was kind of like, why is that? Well, well that goes to racism. In, it, you think that has to do with racism? I 100% think it has to do with racism. I think that back from the history that I've read, the reason that cannabis became illegal was because a lot of the uh, distillers and brewers at the time, back years ago, saw saw that as a major competition to their product, and they said that it was the dark-skinned people who were smoking generally. Yeah. Reefer Madness came out, funded by these groups. Oh, yeah. And before long, every school in America was taught how yes. awful cannabis is and that's why you have the, the, yeah, the that dichotomy that we have yeah now. That, that's a good point but you're welcome irrespective <laughs> of that it's do, yeah. it's dopey mm-hmm. <laughs> pardon the expression <laughs> no that's it's good. dopey and uh ignorance and uh, so all these people have been locked up and then then the next thing is uh is prescription medication oh. so that's something that's uh really wreaking havoc on people mm-hmm. and uh Certainly, that doesn't warrant incarceration. and uh, Except so, for the drug manufacturers, maybe. Well, well yeah. yeah. I don't be... sort of get into that. I know that's a popular thing, you know, but uh, what I mean is uh, everybody needs to be responsible. Needs to, yeah. You know, I mean, you could be responsible. There's places to get help, and, you know, there's always going to be medication for people that need it, you know, people that... Cancer have the or kind of pain that whatever that, that, you know, that, right, uh, yeah. but they're dangerous drugs. Mm-hmm. I just don't think faulting the drug companies is is uh, is the answer. I mean, they're addictive, and certainly there needs to be. The problem is, I think, in the beginning, particularly with Purdue Pharma, who they're yeah, that's kind the of one targeting, they're going after, is yeah. that they were specifically going around. They spent almost all their marketing money on that one drug, and they were telling doctors, oh, yes. it is not addictive. Yeah. Well, and well, doctors, there's a liability there. You know, the yeah, doctors that, that would were be like, yeah, that's not good. tossing it out like candy. You twist your ankle yeah, and you would yeah, get it. Yeah. And, there, and thankfully, all of the noise about it has certainly made everybody more is that aware. The, you're talking about Oxycontin? Mm-hmm. Is that the one you're yeah, talking about? Yes. That came from Purdue Pharma. And so yeah, yeah. That, and they uh, said it wasn't addictive. They were telling people, they were telling doctors, Doctors, it's a miracle drug. You know, yeah. it takes care of pain like that, and yeah. it's not addictive. And that is at the crux of why they're, they're losing these enormous lawsuits. They've got thousands of lawsuits against them and just settled one for $200 million um, yeah. not that long ago, yeah. like needs, in the last yes. few weeks. But, so that's but the only I don't, problem. Yes, and it's terrible if they, they misrepresented it. It's, mm-hmm. it's a crime right, right. to say it's not addictive. However, mm-hmm. however... Uh, you know, if God forbid you're in a situation where you get sliced open on the operating table, you need some sort of medication. Sure. And for you'll be grateful that and... there is medication sure. like that. Absolutely. Uh, and it just goes to it should be highly controlled. It should be tough mm-hmm. to get. Uh, I it's mean, education too. I mean, well, the, people need to understand. It's easier to get a gun. Yeah. You know, I mean, mm. we have the same we have the same thing with guns, right? right I mean, right. Yeah. you have a segment of the population that shouldn't have their hands on guns, right? But so, um, depending on the state you go to, real easy. I'm trying to make a point, but I got confused. Uh, but uh, we have that effect on people. Yes, <laughs> I, I I think that um, yes, I look. There are laws. Mm-hmm. There needs to be more laws. 
like I, there are with drugs, with guns. And you I know, think because what, because look, you you shouldn't be able to buy an automatic weapon. Right. I mean, you should not. Right. But it should now. That doesn't mean there aren't lots of people that can buy automatic weapons, mm -hmm. you know, and be safe with them. That's that's not the point. That's that's not the argument. Yeah, but you're there's, right. There's there's a a bunch of people that are hearing voices in their head. Mm -hmm. And they get their arms on these weapons, and then it's a problem, right? Well, so being safe with anything. The society has to deal with that yes, truth. You're absolutely right. You know what I mean? This That's thing. a truth yeah. that has to be dealt with. Right. And, uh, you know, so anyway, we, we covered it's a lot personal, of ground here. It's you know, personal responsibility. We, this is what it boils down yeah, to. Yeah, but, but when it comes to guns... It, no, but I mean, like when you know, we're talking drugs, it yes, they have to be regulated, and yes, the they have to be uh, the the manufacturers have to be aware of what they're gonna, yeah. you know, how I they're mean, promoting they say, it. This is great; it cures pain, but it's highly addictive. Do yeah. not take this, right? You know, do not fool with this unless you know, and it's up to the doctor to mm -hmm. to get that. I agree that. Purdue has some li that has liability, but yeah, yeah, you know. Anyway, we we touched on a lot of stuff. You surprised me when you came walking in here because you you're a big guy. You look like a tough guy. I and, am so tough. And I I'm saw the Wolf of Wall Street, and they had some nerdy guy playing you. Yes. What the hell was that? <laughs> I, I'm as soft. You were as a never Kleenex. that guy. Were you ever? No, that guy? no. Uh, you know what? I wanted to meet him. It's Dustin Hoffman's son. Oh, yeah. I didn't know me that. In the movie. Yeah, I wanted to meet him, but we never met. He had. A full head of gorgeous hair. Yes, he did. sure did. Yeah. He... Were you cowed at that moment when you were in front of that room full of guys who were just screaming your name and getting ready to sell your stock? Was that? Yeah, that was a that was a very accurate. Uh, that's exactly what happened. Really? Yeah. yeah. I tried to pitch them on the on the company, and they went crazy in the room. Yeah. And it was true. They were all on oxy. They were Maybe. all amped up. <laughs> yeah. They were ready to go. It ready was to really go. An amazing scene. But wow. uh, yes, that was so true. You went a lot to, of the movie was true. Uh, Wolf of Wall Street. Mm -hmm. It was a good movie. So your ch it was a great it movie. It was a very good and movie. And your childhood buddy was in that movie Danny. 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 Right, right, right. Yeah. Jordan Belfort's uh, partner in that. Jordan story. Belfort was the boss. Yeah. And we became good friends. Mm -hmm. And uh, and it was the two of them were sort of like the leaders. Where are they both now? I think that Jordan does uh, motivating talks. Mm hmm. And Danny is in Florida. Living the so life. These were smart guys. <laughs> yeah. These They're were smart guys. fast talking guys. And you came along, you knew at least Danny from the very beginning. And he wanted to raise money for you. He wanted to do your IPO. It was all on the up and up until it wasn't anymore. Yeah. What, what, Danny what happened? Danny went to number one school too. Did he? <laughs> yeah. I might have known. Guys. Yeah. No, uh, look, uh, I'm... I, I'm complicit as they are. You know, I wanted to raise money for my company, and uh, and uh, you know, I was part of it, and uh, and uh, I'm not going to blame them anymore. You know, it's not fruitful. Uh, You're right. What's important is the moment, right? Where and we the are huge now. success. I mean, it's, yeah. it's unbelievable what happened when you went away. Profits tanked. When you came back, like in one year. You're up a hundred million dollars. No, year I before. don't know about that. But that's, we, that's done, what I read. We've done, we've done very well since mm -hmm. I've been back, and uh, you know, I built a. It's the irony is because I went away, I was forced to build a deeper team of people mm -hmm. because I wasn't there. You can't. There's no way I could do my job from prison, and so I built this amazing team that's just the best in the business. So that's I a think. great lesson right there because yeah. so often people, really is. one of the failings of, of innovative people is that they want to be hands on with everything and you didn't, you couldn't be hands on with everything. So you found a way. That to, is very accurate. Yeah. This may be the truest thing that you'll say in a long time. Yes, it is. It is oh, a, it. Uh, <laughs> is a, it is a, the, a drawback of someone like a founder or an entrepreneur. They want to, they want to do everything. So I was forced to do the opposite and it yeah. reaped a tremendous bounty. You said something in the documentary I just loved. I think you were talking to um, one of the Jenners or Kardashians, and you said, I want to be your gateway shoe. Yeah. And, oh, you and, remember that. You guys did your work here. Oh, I... That's always been a big thing. I always say that, like, Steve Madden, you know, is a gateway drug shoe <laughs> right. for, like, Gucci and Louboutin. Right. Yeah, and, no, it's, the kids start on Maddens, Yeah. and they end up... 
on Gucci. Yeah, but now you're nostalgic so the back to Madden's now. But they always go back to Madden. People, well, they people who had Madden. those, right? The the '90s shoe, uh, the slinky, the slinky yeah. is back. Yeah. You just reintroduced it a week or two ago. You guys are doing your work here. I'm so and impressed. And people are going, well, I, listen, people in the newsroom are talking about it. Yeah, They've you got guys them. did good. The platforms. You know, so yeah, we did a little, you know, retroactive uh, throwback to the 90s at, with Urban Outfitters. And it's enormously successful. Really cool. Yeah. The yeah. The 90s. It's just, it's interesting because you say, okay, you're, it's your gateway to those other shoes. Yeah. But personally... You know, I was there. Then, you know, you toy with the like ridiculously expensive shoes. And then you say to yourself, wait a minute, really? I'm going to go spend 1200 bucks on a pair of shoes when I see this great pair of shoes that is it's so well put. Isn't going to break yeah, the bank that's great. that I got three kids in college and it, and it's I don't have to think about it. I can put it on and just go. These look fabulous yeah. i feel good in them i'm wearing them yeah the most and, secure women yeah i just think wear steve madden you have to oh, you know because nice marketing no it's really it's like, true that's a it's good that true. is the a most good secure marketing. women you know i went out to dinner with some folks some wealthy folks from right. the upper east side of manhattan yeah and one of the kids had on like a 900 hundred dollar sneaker i'm like are you kidding me <laughs> right i make the greatest <laughs> shoes what the hell's the and matter then, with at you? first <laughs> and, it, and it happens you know because yeah. you get caught up in this in this thing uh but uh, you know, there's room for all of it. But they always come back to Steve's. Yeah. Well, and, if you have stupid uh, money, I guess. Yeah. But, it's but what? If you have stupid money no, and you, no, no. you're they looking mix, you for ways to throw in. it away, but but I, I yeah, I suppose so. I just oh, we make the greatest shoes. We are. Yeah, values, you really do. It, they're they're comfortable. They're beautiful. Yeah. They're they're of the moment. Yeah. And you know, look, I got a daughter at uh, American University uh, down in in Washington, and. That's her. You're her go-to shoe guy yeah. because she's she's a smart kid and she feels beautiful and stylish in them. And she's not asking me for twelve hundred dollar pairs of shoes, and I'm grateful for that. Yeah, that's great. But, I love to yeah. hear that. Yeah, um, no, I think it's, and I think you're right. I think that when you are confident in yourself, you feel when something makes you feel good, you allow it to make you feel good. Yeah. You don't say, oh. It's as, it's like people who go in and say I have to spend at least this amount of money on yeah. a purse. Really? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> That's right. What about your confidence? You said, "Quote, there's a part of me that doesn't think I'm really that good." Yeah. There's a fraud element. Yeah. Is that what keeps you motivated? Cuz once you think so, you're hot shit, then you're done. A lot of artistic I don't know people. I'm probably way. just talking too much. Uh cuz they do some interviews. Well, sometimes and, truth comes movie. out at moments like but, that. But uh, you know, one goes you know i've had a lot of success and i've had some failure right i mean you so it forces you to kind of like think about all this stuff um i think we're all the same i think but people tend to view people with a lot of success and money differently uh i don't even know why i'm saying well, that because but, you know, they you have just success have to, and money we're all the same i mean i really think no, you're, uh, no, you're right you know we get up in the morning and we look in the mirror and sometimes we like what we see and sometimes we don't and uh, sometimes we think a shirt looks great on us and sometimes, ugh, we look bad. And I don't think it matters if you're uh, Jeff Bezos or Steve Madden or uh, Mick Jagger. I mean, yeah. you know, I think we all have that. Or Drake. There are or moments when, you, well. I think we all have I that. I think him. Drake <laughs> looks in the mirror and says, I don't like the way I look today. Yeah. I really believe that. Yeah, and, no, you're uh, right. Yeah. So, um once you get past all the success stuff, then you sort of, you know, then there's the person, right? You settle into your so life. So you got yeah. the person and then you got the other guy, right? Steve, Steve one and Steve two. So, uh, and most of the time I'm with Steve, the real Steve. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, so you have, you're forced to kind of like, you know. Steve one and Steve well, two. I'm, I'm thinking saying, of like Billy know, Joel's The Stranger. That's what you're talking about right now. We all have a face that we hide away forever. Well, mm -hmm. yeah. But I'm just saying like, you know, then just just the society is so everything is success and money and and so you tend to take that on and then you think one thing but really it's something else but i don't it's not that i don't think it's cool to be successful and wealthy or whatever or be a, try to win i just think that you know um I don't mean to be cliched about it, but you know, there's just many aspects to our life. Right, so it's not a, necessarily you your know, essence. At the end of the day, we're, yeah. you know, like being a dad. 
Like being a dad, right, sure, yeah. You know. Uh, How cool is that, by the way? It's cool. I saw your daughter on your back in that doc- yes. documentary. That yes. was so kids, damn sweet. And, uh, so wonderful. I came to, ch- to fatherhood late in life, mm-hmm. and uh, I have three children, and, uh, you know, it's great. And uh, I sometimes, when we're hanging out, I just... I just look around and I can't believe that I have kids and and uh, it's uh, it's pretty cool. It's a pretty cool. It makes you reflect because it it first of all they teach you something about yourself that you never realized because they reflect back. It's like looking in a mirror and, and they hold they you look accountable. You. Uh, <laughs> right? Yeah. Well, the one thing is you can't sort of get mad at them and never talk to them again. No. no. <laughs> I mean, you could. Like but... when they get you angry, that's it. You're out. But they, and speak. they keep you, you honest, so it, too. You, it's, it's, like you don't have that card to play. <laughs> right, right. So, uh, but uh, I went to, I saw, uh, I went to see Dumbo. There's a movie about a flying sure, elephant. Sure, of course. <laughs> and it was in Kipps Bay. Uh, it was great, because the seats go all the way back. And the, I know. It was those the gra- I took like... the greatest nap. Yeah. <laughs> it was, I was oh, like, this it's a good movie, movie theater is the greatest. Uh, now you have to go back and see the whole thing. No, I liked it very much. <laughs> I actually really liked it. I woke up for the important parts. That's the great part about having kids. Yeah. You get to go see those movies. Yes. <laughs> and not feel weird. <laughs> yes. No, so, it, was, it was good. Uh, one more question. Do you like yourself better now after all of the difficulties and all of the things in life so the answer is yes the short answer is yes Mm -hmm. but there's always room for improvement and i'm i'm very uh you know i want to be a better dad i want to be more patient you know i want to be better at a lot of things you know uh and uh so the struggle continues never stop growing yeah you don't stop growing you try to grow you know? Yeah. That's all it that's all that matters yeah. is that you try. Yeah. Yeah. People love you. Really. Women love you. Wall Street loves you. You yeah. talk their language. Yeah. What is that language, well, I, by the way? You know what? We I, I we just we just perform. I think that they recognize That's the language that. they understand. Perform, yeah. And you got your first quarter results in a couple of days. You probably can't talk about that or we'll, we'll all go to prison. <laughs> Correct. Yeah, exactly. We won't, even, oh, we, we, we won't mention Hospital that. Hospital corners. I will not sit on anybody else's bed but my own if yes. that happens. I can tell you that right now. <laughs> okay. But uh, we're doing well. Company's doing good. And uh, and because of the great team that I, I'm, that I work with, I'm able to do shows like this and mm-hmm. do some charity work and do other stuff that I, you know, I have to make the donuts every day like I did. So that's a good thing. You're very self-effacing. It's interesting. Well, I don't you know could about all t- that. You could tout yourself a lot louder and you don't, and it's interesting. Well, I'm a lunatic most of the time. Yeah, well, that's it's a good It's the morning. Thing. I'm tired. You yeah, I haven't be. woken up yet. <laughs> no, I, I, you know, there's, there's a lot going on. Yeah. You got to keep your head. Oh, yes. 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 Years to come. Yeah. I just want to thank you for making size 16s. <laughs> I cannot believe it. And the shoe looks great on you. Doesn't it? Thank it does. you. Handsome, very good yeah, color. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Yeah. I like yeah. it. Wow. Steve Madden likes my shoes. Of course, they're his shoes. But right. still, I feel good about that. I can't believe that I was talked out of wearing my Steve Madden. And I love these shoes. And I was talked out of this particular pair that I wanted to wear, especially because it's a beautiful spring day. Oh, it's beautiful out there. I know. And yeah. I could perfectly have worn my blush espadils. Espadils. Yeah. Your daughter talking about it. Look, this is the bourbon talking now. But, uh, yeah, she said to me, no, I think he'll be, he'll think you're cheesy if you do that. Yeah, you know. No, not at all. Who listens to a 21-year-old girl? That's it. (laughs) Yeah. Well, listen, we all, everybody values a 21-year-old girl and not so much the uh, 50-something, 60-somethings anymore. (laughs) No, I know. Too funny. Oh. Yeah. Well, listen, I think it's fantastic that you've made such so many amazing Life turns back yeah. and forth, and look at yes. you now, and you're back. Yes, good for you. And we're here. Yeah, well, cool. That's well, it's good, good to be here. Thank you. All right. The News Conversation Podcast. News on the rocks.